Great. So, um, uh, again, thank you uh, for the invitation. I'm going to speak to you today about parastomals hernias and um, how to prevent them and what the best approach or the most durable repair will be. And, um, again, I don't have any uh, relevant um, disclosures in terms of regarding this talk. Um, although this evening there will be a separate talk and uh, we'll be talking extensively about uh, biologics in terms of uh, both parasomal hernias and ventral hernia repairs. So we know that parasomal hernias are kind of the bane of our uh, existence in terms of when we create a stoma. Many uh, have heard the adage that if you have the stoma long enough, you will develop a parasomal hernia, and that is true. I think it all depends on uh, if you're imaging the patient, you will certainly see some sort of component of a hernia uh, in time. There are certainly patients that are at higher risk of developing a parastomal hernia. We know those with uh, obesity and, and uh, those on steroids and smokers, uh, COPDs, and any kind of pulmonary uh, problems uh, are predisposed to it at a higher incidence. Uh, but the rate varies anywhere from 5 to 50 to 60 percent in the literature and, and maybe even higher in certain patient uh, populations. Certainly the patient who is asymptomatic with a parastomal hernia, uh, this is not the patient we tend to operate on. Again, uh, if they're asymptomatic, it's best to leave them alone. Uh, but those patients that are exhibiting uh, significant pain or discomfort, uh, difficulty applying the appliance. If they're having issues not being able to maintain a good, a proper seal, if they're constantly leaking, obviously their quality of life is going to be hampered and, and impaired. That, that's a reason to, uh, uh, to repair the parastomal hernia. Uh, young patients, particularly with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, if they develop a large enough parastomal hernia, body imaging issues. And uh, obviously the need if there is an obstruction or strangulation or perforation, that goes without saying. Uh, just because the paper is an older paper doesn't mean it's not a good paper. I think this is a good paper and I'm partial to it because uh, Howard and myself trained at the Leahy, so we tend to present some Leahy data when we're up. But this is uh, from Mark Rubin, uh, his experience or the experience at the Leahy at the time. And this was it really at the inception where mesh repairs was really starting to kind of take over. But you can see that they describe or they'll present uh, the Leahy's experience, uh, 94 parastomal hernias over a period of time in 80 patients, and they report their experience of primary repair, so repairing the parastoma hernia primarily with suture repair versus those patients who underwent stoma relocation versus those patients who underwent a mesh repair. And at that time, it would be permanent mesh. Uh, 